It finally happened. I've received so many questions about when the new NVIDIA NV Inc. encoder is coming. I realize that is redundant, but I need to be verbose. Is coming to Streamlabs OBS. And it's finally coming. Either by the time this video goes live or soon thereafter, Streamlabs OBS will get the new NV Inc. encoder options in their software. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to set them up. TubeBuddy is the best tool you can get to manage your YouTube channel. You can update videos in bulk, optimize your SEO, syndicate to social media, back up your metadata, and more, all with a simple browser extension. Head to eposvox.com slash TubeBuddy to learn more and download it for free. So if you are unaware of what the new NVENC encoder is or what the new settings are or anything like that, I do have a full dedicated video breaking down what the new encoder is, what the new options are, how to, you know, how they affect your image quality, what graphics cards it supports, because it supports from 700 series all the way to 20 series. It's not just for 20 series. What the difference between this, you know, new implementation of software is versus the new NVENC chip that's on the 20 series cards on a hardware level is, and the differences between the old implementation and the new one, some performance differences, things like that. I have a whole video on that I will point you to for a formal explanation, but this will work on any NVENC capable graphics card except 600 series, and you know, you're gonna have varying performance in some of these options as you go back in hardware aging. It will perform the best on the new 20 series cards, but this isn't a quality improvement directly, although the new controls will give you additional quality. This is a performance improvement. That's implementation here in Streamlabs is a performance improvement, which benefits everyone. Uh, and then the hardware change on 20 series graphics cards and the 1660 and 1660 Ti graphics cards are all physical hardware changes that actually do improve quality across the board. So let's flip on over to Streamlabs OBS and check it out. So I'm using here a beta preview build of Streamlabs OBS, but the settings that you encounter in your public build once the update goes live will be virtually identical. So nothing too much to worry about here. So typically, if you have your encoder settings set up, you go over here to the settings cog and you go to output. And in simple mode, you can see the encoder options here. If you, when you're under streaming or under recording, you have encoder, Software X264, Hardware NV Inc, which is the old version, and then Hardware NV Inc New, which is of course the new version. Select that, and if you're just using simple mode, that's really all you need to do. You'll get a potentially a little bit better performance, or you may notice nothing at all, but still it is recommended that you leave it on this, unless you somehow run into some trouble. However, in advanced mode, if you're using advanced output mode, you get access to quite a bit more settings here. So by selecting Hardware NV Inc New for the encoder, you have all of these options here, which they they might still be exposed if you choose the old version. Yeah, like you can still see some of them. However, uh, certain ones don't actually go into effect. So just generally speaking, it's recommended to use the new one overall moving forward. However, you will notice that something changes here when I switch between them. In that, the old encoder allowed you to utilize the encoder itself to rescale your output, which meant that you could record at 1080p and then live stream at 720p. The new encoder cannot do this. And honestly, this was a very inefficient way of doing it anyway, because by setting the scaling in your video tab, it just uses the GPU render load without adding a whole lot of extra load to scale it and is much more efficient versus doing it in the encoder, which causes encoder lag for some people. But if you do really want to do this, you have to stick with the old one. The new one doesn't even give you that option. So setting up your streaming settings here for streaming. Again, you're going to be stuck with CVR for streaming. Set your bitrate. 6,000, for example. Two keyframe interval seconds. That's all about normal. However, you'll see some new options down here and some weird naming. So for preset, if you are on, say, I'm going to say 900 series and older graphics cards. So the 970, the 980, all the way back to the 750 Ti, things like that. I personally recommend leaving it here on quality. The difference between quality and max quality is that max quality utilizes what's called two pass encoding, which basically it encodes it twice within the same, you know, interval time to squeeze out a little bit more quality for your bits. And this is really great on very high end powerful graphics cards, especially the 10 series and especially the 20 series and 1660 Ti where you have that extra processing load because this actually uses the normal CUDA graphics processing hardware that your games use. 
And so if you have a dedicated streaming rig that the graphics card is only running your stream, or you have a high-end one of the newer graphics cards that has enough headroom to use two-pass encoding, you can use max quality. It will look great and help out your stream. However, if you're on an older card, or you start to notice that you are getting errors saying you are running into, or not errors, but you know, the little skipped frames due to encoding lag, this is where you would want to, as your first step, change this from max quality down to quality and see if that improves your encoding lag. It might improve render lag as well, worth testing. Profile should pretty much always be left on high for 720p and higher resolution streaming. Has certain impacts on the encoder settings that you just want to leave there. Now you have two new options that weren't present prior to this update. That is look ahead and psycho visual tuning. These are named kind of silly. Psycho visual tuning enables certain, uh, basically visual tuning in the encoder settings that are typically only reserved for very high level, you know, high quality, slow mode encoding. So if you, again, if you notice encoding load, you can uncheck this. Otherwise, you can leave it checked. However, for live streams, I recommend leaving, and NVIDIA themselves recommends leaving look ahead turned off and leaving max B frames at two. B frames are essentially full resolution, or, you know, full quality, non, I mean, they're still going to be compressed, but, you know, as less compressed as possible frames within your image that are then referenced for all of the compressed frames. More B frames can increase your quality, but can take way more processing power and use up more bandwidth. So if you are using a low bitrate live stream, two is the max that you ever want to hit. However, for slow motion games, for slow moving games like card games or games where most of the image is static, you can bump this up to four. Four is the max you can set at all, but you can bump this up to four and get a little bit better image quality because most of your scene isn't changing anyway, so it doesn't have to do as much work. But if you're doing high pat high-paced, fast action games or first-person shooters or things like that, you will want to leave this on to anyway. Again, the consequences of increasing it to max B frames of 4, especially with streaming bit rates of, say, 6 megabits per second, which is Twitch's limit, you're going to notice a lot more pixelization and blocking in your live stream in during fast-paced action games. If that's the case and you've happened to set that to 4, set it back down to 2. Uh, I don't recommend setting it to one. Now the look ahead option basically enables the GPU to automatically choose what number of B frames between zero and the max number that you set on its own, you know, based on encoder load and quality that it's achieving and things like that. For most situations, leave that off. But again, for low motion games where you're already increasing it to four, leave that on. That way it doesn't always use four, but can decide on its own how many B frames it's using. If you don't know what any of that means and still don't, you know, like my explanation, basically just copy what I have here, other than bitrate, choose that based on your internet bandwidth, of course, but you, for higher end GPUs and newer graphics cards, max quality, uncheck look ahead, check psycho visual tuning, leave max B frames on too. Now, the GPU counter here is a little bit misleading. This should be removed as well when you switch to new Envy Ink because what will happen if you do change this, this is a number that indicates which graphics card you are encoding on. So if you are in a system with multiple graphics cards, as that is sometimes a workflow people use for OBS recording, if you change this, zero is your default, just your first graphics card. One would be your second graphics card. It starts counting from zero. If you change this to another one, this will silently fall back to using the old Envy Ink method because the new implementation is based entirely around keeping the frames of your video from your game and everything else on your graphics card to reduce added system load that the old implementation put on your system. So by using another graphics card, you're getting rid of all those performance benefits and kicking it back to old Envy Ink mode because Envy Ink's already efficient enough that other than OBS's actual canvas rendering, NVENC itself doesn't use the rendering load for most uses of your game in a non-efficient way. And so by switching it to use it to another graphics card, you're not keeping it on the same graphics card anymore. You're kicking it over to another graphics card, which uses more system load again to copy it to memory and yada, yada, yada. And it's just generally not recommended. Only, only in very rare scenarios will that actually benefit your performance. So leave this on zero unless you have a specific reason why you're doing what you're doing. As far as recording settings go, it is pretty much the same. You are going to have issues, especially if you 
aren't on a dedicated streaming rig if you're trying to run intense games, running both a live stream and a recording with the max quality two-pass preset enabled, especially at like 1080p 60 or higher, uh, you're going to run into issues, or and especially on older graphics cards, you're going to run into issues running both of them at max quality. But otherwise, your settings are going to be pretty much identical. You come down here, hardware, Envy ink, new, and then you come over here, preset, max quality, profile high, and then for recording, you can set max B frames to four. Actually, I just realized that for whatever reason, Streamlabs OBS doesn't even enable the options for look ahead and psycho visual tuning. I'm not really sure what's up with that. They are not updating. This may be because I'm on a beta preview build, but the current build that I have does not update the settings here. But if the assuming the public build does, you can enable both psycho visual tuning and look ahead and use four max B frames. However, I'm told by Nvidia that this still isn't entirely recommended because you have enough bitrate during recording that you don't need those extra B frames. Like that just creates more work for your graphics card and doesn't inherently improve quality. So uncheck look ahead, leave psycho visual tuning checked, and leave max B frames on too. And then set your keyframe interval to two seconds as usual. And then I recommend recording with CQP which is a constant rate factor based quality. It basically just aims to achieve the same quality level regardless of bitrate. And so I usually recommend leaving that on 14, 18, or 20. You know, the smaller number, the higher the quality and the higher file size you'll get, but then you can compress it in editing before you upload or recommend using VBR. And for 1080p, I recommend recording at about say 50 megabits per second, so 50,000 max bit rate. I usually say set that to double your target bit rate, so 100,000. I record at ridiculous bit rates, but you get the idea. And then again, if you're recording and on a dedicated rig or only recording, max quality. So that about covers it. The new Envy Ink encoder is enabled or will be very shortly in Streamlabs OBS. And here's a general overview of how you set it up and utilize it. And overall, Again, on most systems, you're probably not going to notice a ton of difference using it between quality or performance at all. That's just not how, it, you know, it's not that significant. But in some games, in some cases, you can see a 10% improvement in your in-game frame rate and your stream performance running well with this new implementation. And you can squeeze a little bit more quality out of it by mastering the controls and things like that as well. And again, the 20 series and 16 series graphics cards are going to have the best results in terms of utilizing these features for both performance and quality gains as well. Hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, hit the like button, subscribe for more tech education. I do have an affiliate link for Streamlabs OBS. If you haven't downloaded it yet, please download it using my affiliate link. It gives a teeny tiny kickback to the channel. Let them know I sent you in. Help support making videos or something in the future. I'm Evil's Vox here to make tech easier and more fun. Go check out my OBS Masterclass, my other Streamlabs videos, and my full breakdown of the new NVENC versus old NVENC and how that relates to the new graphics cards and yada, yada, yada. I'll see you next time.